for y'all here in the background having a good time. We just having fun here. We've got Mr. Uh, Hunt Freeman. Yeah. Freeman.
you're going to have a relationship there with your family. You're going to have it. Right now they hurt because of some of the things that happened. And like I tell you, most young people about the twin tower that they built. If they realize how long it took them to build that twin tower, two years, but it only took seconds to break them with the fall down, the next to fall down. Had they had to build it, it would have taken more than a year. So you have to build that trust back in. Most people, the word of God tells us, say, I own the will for Satan. Yes. Because they know, they, they, they can't, they, so much stuff has happened that they can't let it go right now. But the only way that, that that's going to change, God said, he's going to do it. As you get recovered, as you get in recovery, yes. he said he's going to recover that relationship. And I uh, wanted to add something to what not me, God is, is really speaking right now. Because... Being alone, sometimes God has to separate us from certain people Just because he wanted to yeah. make sure he gets what he needs to do with you. Right. And sometimes he would put us in isolation. And when you're in isolation, it's not necessarily that you're alone. It's because God wants to spend that time with you without any outside distraction. Right. Because sometimes people hold our past against us and they throw it in our face all the time mm -hmm. to the point where we can't even hear from God no more because we got all this other stuff coming at us. Mm -hmm. So God is knowing what he is doing in your life. So when you come back, they're not going to even be able to recognize who you are because of what he's going to do in and through yes. you in the process of separating you. Because sometimes, you know, sin can separate us from God, but God is not wanting that with you. It's what he's desiring from you, and because of what he placed inside of you from the time you was placed in your mother's womb, it's requiring that he gets you to that place alone. So don't think that you're alone. It's God doing something in you and allow him to finish what he started. Amen. And just to piggyback on what Sean uh Anthony is saying, I'm reminded of David when he was in, when he was in his zigzag season. Yeah. And David went. David was in zigzag, and God isolated him. Yes. Because his, his own turned against him. Yes. Right. And, and, and and David done. He did three things. Watch this. David did three things. Number one, the Bible says that he wept before the Lord. And then number two, after he was weeping, he encouraged himself in the Lord. Yes. And then after he was able to encourage himself in the Lord, he sought direction. Uh, from the Lord and God he asked God should we go forward and God said yes go forward and that's the word that he's speaking to you right now yes. the souls harbor and all the men who are there God is saying yes stay the course go forward because you shall win you shall overcome that's what we're talking about overcoming coming out of zigzag so so uh brother Hunter real quick tell us about uh your experience with uh Brent and Reggie and all the brothers over at Soul Harbor. My experience with Soul Harbor has been, um, uh, it started off as a roller coaster and just in the past few months it's plateaued. Um, I've had my you know, ups and downs with Reggie and uh, Brent in particular. Because mm -hmm. my I can tell you, I can just look at it, I know, I've seen him all the way. My behavior was not conducive to the right. policy of Soul Harbor. When I was first there, and it and it took you know some some things to happen for me to really take my sobriety serious, or to, to realize how serious my situation was, um, you know, and, and just it's by the grace of God and you know that, that these two guys have even stuck by my side, and and even through the the things that I had done that were wrong, they they realized that that wasn't the real me, and and, and no matter what I had done negatively they still saw the positive in me. And that's just a blessing, you know, because uh, you know, I hear people tell me all the time, you know, you, you got so much potential and stuff, but you just, you don't ever act on it, but you, you know, it's there. Yeah. And, and luckily, these two guys have seen that and, you know, kept that up in me. And it's been <coughs> very beneficial. I mean, yeah. I just, I don't, I never really had friends, but, you know, I definitely consider, my, you know, I, I at least have a couple friends now. I, I come to Reggie and Brent on a regular basis, and usually I don't talk to people about my problems, but I, I, I for some reason, I, I do open up to these guys. And, you know, I know they put up with a, with a lot of crazy things and a lot of, um, you know, I, I don't even know the word for it. Can I interject All right. Young man next to me has taken me through all kinds of emotions. All kinds of emotions. 
And there are times, and I'm being honest, because we do sit down and talk. I've watched this man grow, but there are times when I just don't think he's going to get it because he's a mere reflection of, of me because he's been in sports, gone through some things. But then, as you know, he pulls some rabbit out of his hat and it just floors me because I just, I just know he ain't getting it because it's all about him and it's all about him. And then he does something outside of himself. And I've watched this. I've watched this man come in here and say, I ain't listening. I ain't doing it. I ain't this. It's my way. But he's still here. And I was with him um, uh, about a week ago at, at, his, uh, at his home. And there was a piece of uh, mail that had some kind of a refund for a facility he had went to. And he had been there only for an hour, and he left. And so I posed a question, I said, well, why haven't you left us? You left all those others, but you're still here. And that's, it shocks me. And I'm, I'm very proud of him. I mean, like all the young people, I get angry with him because I want them to get it. I see something in him, and I believe in him, even though he can't see what I see. But now I understand what people were seeing in me. Because right. I see it in him. Right. Because he has so much. Yeah. And, and that's why I love this scripture. That says, Son, Son, say you desire to have. Mm -hmm. And it may sit you with me, but I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen your brother. And that's the last part I like, the last part. When thou art converted, go back and help somebody that would just like you. And it sounds like mm -hmm. that's what's happening here. It's so hard, you know, that yeah. they're reaching out to people that were just like them. And those are the people that are, 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 to be, are the ones that's going to really be a significant and vital part to, him, to their lives. And I say that, I say that because a lot of these, I don't even think my co-hosts didn't know, I, I feel homeless for two years. I was on the street for two years. Yeah, you told me. I was on your I wasn't on drugs or anything. I got to I like a point to where my addiction was. I just got tired of my parents trying to tell me what to do. That was my addiction. I wanted to do what I wanted to do. You know, and for that, for that, it, it caused me, I caused myself to be humble. And then when in that process, you know, I think that's, you know, people always talk about the, 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 uh, the prodigal son when he got to his lowest. You know, I believe that sometimes you don't have you don't have to get to your Lord, but sometimes you choose to get to your Lord. Mm -hmm. And so I chose to be there. And that's when God really talked to me when I couldn't when I couldn't do nothing but look up. And so, you know, and then he surrounded me by, by brothers, good brothers like like a uh, uh, uh Fitch, Brent, 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 Reggie and uh, Brent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got y'all mixed up. But so he surrounded me with brothers that would help me and that was in the same boat that I was in. And so to me, I'm saying, I want to thank God, I want to thank you, I want to thank Soul Harbor, uh, because you are really just living the life that Jesus had told us to live anyway. Mm -hmm. And let me say this. First of all, God saved the best for that. Okay? And the reason why I say that, because I'm only moved by the Spirit of God when He the Spirit. And when I look at you and I'm hearing from you, but then I'm also hearing from God, He's asking you to remove yourself from the equation. Because then once you submit and surrender your all to Him and realize He takes ownership over you. You understand? What He explained to me one time before is we only caretakers of this body. We're not the owners of ourselves. He is our owner. So we have to seek Him for the manual, for the instruction. You understand that? So what I'm asking you to do and I'm challenging you to do is challenge yourself to remove I, me, mine, my. Just remove anything that has something to do with you because it's not about you. That's why God has called you. And that's why everybody, including myself, seeing beyond the exterior but looking into the spirit that God has imparted into you. So with that being said, just remove those things and watch how God will uh, start, you know, moving on your behalf. Let, 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 let me say this, you brought up a good vital point, because I remember a time when I thought it was about me, 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 and I remember when God told me, say, it's not about you, it's, it's, it's all about me. I'm like, man, I mean, I, I know that. 
And he had me to read this scripture, Psalms 100. And I was brought up in church, because uh, they did that before devotion. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing, know ye that the Lord, he is God, and he that made us, and now we are serving you, his people, and the sheep of his pastor. See, so you know I know this, right? Right. So, one day, one day, God said, I want you to read this. So, I'm doing it out of memory, and I'm, you know, make a joyful noise. He said, stop. He said, I want you to read it. So, now I'm putting my finger on the word, but I'm still doing it out of memory. Make a joyful noise. He said, stop. He said, I want you to read it. And so, this time, I took the Bible, and I really read I started reading it. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands, serve the Lord. He said, stop. I said, Lord, I'm reading. And then he said, I know. He said, but this, what I want you to do now is take the words that I bring off this page and amplify it. And so as I begin to read, like I said, they say, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands, serve the Lord. But so as I begin to read it the way he wanted me to, it started sounding like this. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands, serve the, the Lord. Lord. Come before his presence. presence. Know ye that he is God. Yeah. It is he that has made us. And now we ourselves, we are his yes. people. And the sheep of his pastor. Yeah. And into his gates we thank him. And into his courts we yeah. pray. Be thankful unto him. And bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his truth can do it all to me. And God said, it about you. It's all about me. So when we start denying ourselves, yes. we yes. really elevate ourselves. Mm -hmm. Thank you, brother. Thank you, brother. That's Pastor, Pastor Armstrong. Jesus. Pastor of Trinity Church. <laughs> hey, Brother Ken. Brother, Brother Ken. Hey, we're, we're great, man. Give us a few minutes. Uh, we're about to close out, but go ahead. I want to give you some time.